We Jesus Christ. Hello. Oh my God. Hello. I am here to do a video. <laughs> What's up Thrill Seekers? So today I am going to be bringing to you guys my um, top coasters at, uh, I keep almost saying Six Flags, if not, it's not Six Flags. My top coasters at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Um, this is a really good park. I went there about two-ish months ago and I absolutely love the coaster lineup. They have some amazing coasters there and this is going to be all of the coasters there ranked. So starting it off at number eight is actually a coaster that I haven't ridden and that is Super Grover, wait, no. That's at, that's at SeaWorld San Antonio. It's called Grover's Alpine Coaster. Grover's Alpine Coaster is the kiddie coaster at the park, and from the looks of it, it looks like a pretty standard kiddie coaster. Pretty good for the kids, but really not something uh, that I really need to ride, and I'm not even sure if they'll actually allow me to ride it because of high limits and everything like that. So moving on to number seven, something that I actually have ridden, and that coaster is Loch Ness Monster. Loch Ness Monster is a arrow looping coaster at the park. Uh, it just celebrated its 40th anniversary this year, which is pretty awesome. And overall, I think it still holds up pretty well. Overall, it's a pretty fun coaster. It definitely does have uh, the classic aero roughness, uh, especially when you're going into the loops, which, by the way, the loops are the only interlocking loops in the world, which is pretty awesome. Uh, unfortunately, you don't actually, like, go through the loops as th at the same time as another train, which would be super cool, um, but because of block systems and all of that kind of stuff, um, we can't, they can't really do that anymore. But anyways, it does definitely have some head banging when you're going in and out of the loops, as well as you're just kind of taking some of those transitions, which is pretty classic for an aero coaster. So my advice is just kind of keep your head forward. But other than that, it has an amazing layout. It's a super fun ride as long as you uh, sit in not a wheel seat. Um, then it's amazing, great layout, and overall a pretty, pretty fun and unique coaster. So number six is kind of interesting. It's actually Tempesto, which is a Skyrocket 2 um, launch coaster by Premier Rides. And yeah, this coaster is definitely cloned a lot. I think um, the SeaWorld Entertainment um, company bought around like three of these coasters and kind of just distributed uh, distributed them to different parks. Uh, they're at Busch Gardens Williamsburg, Busch Gardens Tampa as of 2019, as well as SeaWorld um, San Diego. And overall, these rides are pretty okay. I've only ridden Tempesto, that's the only one that I have ridden, and Tempesto has comfort calls which are yeah, not 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 great um, overall it they're just like really tight on your shoulders and they hurt and it staples you as you go throughout the ride but other than the restraints it has um, a pretty fun ride experience I think that the layout of this coaster while it's not really unique per se it's definitely an interesting layout um, launching forwards as well as backwards um, and then going through that super, super slow barrel roll is super, super fun. At number five is a awesome family coaster, and that is Verbolton. Uh, this coaster took the place of Big Bad Wolf, uh, which is another very uh, famous coaster. And overall, I think it's a pretty good replacement. Of course, I have not ridden Big Bad Wolf, Big Bad Wolf but uh, from what I have heard, it seems like it, uh, or Verbolton is a pretty decent replacement for it. 
And uh, Verbolton is a very good ride. It has an awesome uh, kind of dark section. It has great theming, uh, pretty decently forceful launches, nothing insane, but you definitely do feel the force on them. And an awesome surprise, which I'm not gonna reveal, uh, but it is a definitely a very unique element on the coaster um, that very, very few coasters actually have, um, which I think is super fun, and the element is super fun and super unique. Also, just like the setting of this coaster is super cool because um, you can like see it from the bridge um, from Fiesta Italia over to, I think, the Germany section. Um, you can see uh, Verbolton going down over the water and when you're on it, you can, uh, of course, you just kind of sweep around over the water, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and it definitely adds something to the coaster when it has a great setting like Verbolton does. The next coaster on the list at the number four spot is uh, Invader, which is a GCI family wooden coaster. Invader is super, 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 oh, I got a text, um, but it is super, super, super fun. Um, I absolutely love airtime. I'm actually more of a floater and flowjector fan versus a straight up ejector fan, uh, which is why it's not like insanely amazing to me, uh, but the drop is great and some of the hills definitely do give you that stomach feeling that I love um, versus other ejector airtime moments that kind of like push you into the restraint so hard that it hurts. <laughs> <coughs> Steel vengeance. Um, um, <coughs> arm seize. Um, wow. Sorry, I just don't know what happened there. But yeah, I love GCIs in general. They're definitely one of my favorite manufacturers. Um, and Invader is no different. I love that coaster and it definitely satisfies the needs of kind of families, like not super little kids, but definitely like kids. Um, and it also satisfies the needs of um, like thrill seekers, which is super cool. Um, it's definitely kind of rare to, I guess, like put in both into one coaster um, and this one does it insanely well. Now getting into the main top three, starting it off with the B&M invert and that is Alpengeist. Alpengeist is a pretty, pretty fun coaster. Um, the reason why it's not my favorite B&M invert is just because it has a very noticeable B&M rattle. Um, and when I say very noticeable, I mean very bad. I wouldn't say that you bang your head a lot on this coaster other than on the Cobra Roll, which is an awful Cobra Roll. Um, but other than that, you don't really bang your head but it definitely does rattle you around, which is not great. Um, it's just overall so noticeable that it's actually like really takes off from the ride. Um, so that's ma the main reason why I prefer Silver Bullet over this. Um, but it's still a great ride with a super unique and awesome layout. Uh, the vertical loop, the Immelman after the drop, and overall, like the height of this coaster are all super awesome. It is the, um, the, okay, one second. It is the uh, tallest uh, B&M invert in the world currently. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, it definitely has like that world record going for it, um, but it doesn't add too much to the ride. It's just kind of a cool stat. Um, but overall, it's a really good coaster. Definitely a good addition to the park. Um, gives it a super awesome, like mainly looping coaster, which the park doesn't really have another one of. I have to get somewhere, so I'm going to do these next two kind of rapid fire. Number two is a Griffin. Um, it is the B&M dive coaster, and my personal favorite B&M dive coaster. Um, it is really, really fun. The drop is really, really great. Gives an insane amount of airtime. Probably my favorite um, airtime moment, especially in the back seat. 
I actually prefer this coaster better in the back versus the front, which is kind of weird for dive coasters, but this one, um, it definitely applies. The drop is great, the emolments are great, the splashdown is a super cool element, especially to watch. Um, and overall, it is a great coaster. I think it's in my top 15, if not top 10 coasters that I have been on. So definitely suggest riding this multiple times if you go to Busch Gardens Williamsburg. And finally, number one is Apollo's Chariot. Apollo's Chariot is the first ever B&M hyper coaster, um, and it is amazing. I would say that it's an elite hyper, but don't take my word for it because I have actually not ridden any other B&M hyper coasters, so I guess we'll see as I get on more. Um, but it's a super awesome coaster. The little pre-drop that it does before the first drop um, definitely builds up some speed um, and definitely adds to the first drop just in that um, you kind of get ejected out of your seat for just a split second um, and it makes the first drop a whole lot better. It has three main awesome um, airtime moments and that is the first drop, um, the drop off of the mid-course brake run, and the last hill. Um, so all of those are great and it's a great coaster. I think it, I rank it number eight or number seven um, that I've ridden, so super awesome coaster. It fakes you out so many times, like the drop, you think it's just gonna go, and it has the little pre-drop, which I like because it picks up speed between the drops, so you get so much air time. But anyways, that's going to be it for this video. That is all of the coasters at Busch Gardens Williamsburg ranked, um, and I need to run because I'm doing stuff. Um, so thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, smash the thumbs up button, and I will see you all next time. Peace out. Bye.